type of thing beyond just war that's going on, the corporate agriculture versus, you know, family farm type of situation. So we're talking about the whole common denominator of sustainable living and, you know, development. Do you have, you cut across any coalitions like the Southern Sustainable Agricultural Working Group or anything? Because the, it seems to me that could be some greater strength. You have some allies. Yeah, and, and then if they were if they were at the legislature, see the problem that we, that we get with ag, and I'm gonna tell you this is a problem. This we're gonna have to solve this problem. We're glad you brought it up. We want to solve this problem. We're gonna have to solve it. But the problem with the ag is they all focused on the farm bill. They're all focused on DC. But they are gotta get them in Georgia. Are you familiar with this, this, a group, purple group, meets every year from Texas to North Carolina, the Southern Sustainable Agriculture Working Group. We need them. And, and, and they, they are going, it's the same odds that you're talking, the same principle of basically not having to build in to the external costs, the wear and tear on the soil, water, and all that into the agricultural system right. is allowing corporate agriculture to run that. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's it, right there. We, 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 need, we need to find ways to build bridges to that group, just like we build bridges it's, to the team farm. It's there, and we need to talk about yeah. this. They have, they have an organization. Because the Farm Bureau, in its present form in Georgia, we're conversant, yeah. but we're not on the same page. Mm -hmm. And then the Agribusiness Council, we are, we are not. They work for us, huh? They work, they work for the Metro no, Chamber. I, I understand. <laughs> they literally work for the Metro Chamber. Yeah. But this. Right there, they are behind the songs right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, that's it. Right. Right. And their principles that they deal with is brought on. Well, I mean, it's, it's, they're, they're, they're people in the legislature today that if they had been there 10, 15 years ago, I would have never worked, I wouldn't even talk to them. It would have been a waste of time, mine and theirs. And today, those people are on my side because I'm talking their language. That's my change, not theirs. You know, I'm talking about property rights. And it was a funny story. We got a, a guy who just quit the legislature, a Democrat from Gwinnett County, got a job in Maine. He's moved to Maine. I can't imagine why anybody would do that, but he did. And he had this uh, young fellow. God, there was a, a resignation. The legislature got to be a judge or something. He resigned. resigned. They had a special election during the session. And this this guy, a real young guy from Cayuga County, uh, got there for the last two or three weeks of the session, literally sworn in for the last two or three weeks. And he was sitting next to this friend of ours, Brown. And, uh, and so, you know, you talk to the people around you in the house. That's just all that he knew. And he, he came in and he says, this, 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 uh, this Senate 213, this water bill, Flint River bill, says, this, this is something funny about that thing. Brown says, yeah, why, why, why do you say that? He says, well, the people, the people that you think would be for it are against it, and they're talking about property rights, and the people that ought to be against it are for it, and they're not talking about pro I don't get it. They're talking about endangered species. They're talking about endangered They're talking about endangered species. And I just don't get it. I don't see how I can vote for that. <laughs> and, and he didn't vote. I mean, he wasn't going to. It was, we got that vote because we were talking about property rights and they were talking about endangered species. It was the, pot, really, the pot has been remixed, believe yeah. me. And we need to reach out to anybody that's like minded. Yeah, I'm glad you told us about this group and if you could give us. You know, names yeah. and phone numbers. Yeah. Well, there's a website. I read it. Yeah. Well, I have a group of up and coming young people for you guys. I'm going back to college over here at ABAC and I'm in the World Studies program and we need to partner up with, with something like this because we have four concentrations. One is um, rights communications, one is politics, monocultures, there's a business uh, track, and there's one for civic development. What the middle? Civic. I think it's civic uh -huh. development. I'm not really sure. Okay. That's Fine. right. But um, we're um, look, they're looking for internships to get all the students into, and most of them are coming from agricultural families. They're coming from all over rural areas, all over the state. So they're interested. Yeah. 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 You would. You
you would think on the surface of it, a riverkeeper group's not working on farm issues, or if they are, they're working against the farmers. Well, they're, they're yeah, all we're working on farm issues, and we're working areas. with farmers. So, yeah, every, all of this is yeah. in the program. That's what this man is talking about. There ain't going to be no farm. We go out to right where we're going, there ain't going to be no farm. No, but see, what you did, you were touching on. I mean, I don't think everybody needs to read Cadillac Badger. Here, here. But, you know, what we're missing is the fact of understanding the basic education system, a sustainable system. What that even means. So what it means, what it's about, and everything, because when you hit the statistics, you had took the entire history of the world to 1960, what, 3 billion people. You know, since then, we more than doubled. And the urbanization process is millions. And in that process, all the natural resource is just getting and there's no process in our education development where those basic principles are built in so the people in the administrative system, this, this is not part of the thing. And they're not looking systemic enough about it. Uh, in that life, and you, it's not when everybody lives in an urban system and they've never been on a farm, and that's what and, and the farmer in right. from the books is, right. is increasingly not existent. Right. It's because it's a corporate operation with employees. So it really needs to be a part of the fundamental education system where I can I enter dependence on all the and the way a some method for all this, you know, it would fix itself in farming if you had to build in the externality. Or when you're building a new development or subdivision, you got to build in the impact on where and there of the common good. But it's not. So if you don't have to build that into the economics, yeah, it's a free ride. It's a free ride. That page that you just had up from the rules, that page is actually developed by the students. The students made that page. Yeah. Yeah. And so they, they, they have, they're learning how to. Opportunities. Uh, if there are people that are interested in internships, if there are multiple organizations that we can plug into, and if there are people that could use uh, guest lectures and other workshop sorts of formats, then we can make people available. 